coming into the Bay of Salinas when I spotted this boat. Look at this. No boom. Catch rigged. Double wishbone. Yep. That boat is underwater. It's almost put me into culture shock. It has been so long since we've seen like a parking lot or a shopping mall that I, I'm almost The girls are in Puerto Rico and it's November of 2019. They just arrived in Salinas yesterday. Now we're going to go to shore, do some provisioning, and make friends. You have to be a real sailor to appreciate how amazing and beautiful this Coming find into is. The Bay of Salinas when I spotted this boat. Look at this. What a sailboat. No boom. Catch rigged. Double wishbone, probably a 32 or 34 foot catch rig, double wishbone, no Jenny sailboat. That's incredible. In our limited experience sailing around Puerto Rico, the weather and the storms roll in really, really fast. Going from sunshine and blue skies to storms within 20 minutes. It's crazy. The rain will come so fast and so heavy that if your dinghy doesn't drain itself or its bilge pump fails, it could sink. Wow. Yep. That boat is underwater. storm surge like they had 20 foot waves washing everything there were boats that were 100 200 meters on shore and you can see they're still rebuilding from the damage Helena and I had come to shore mostly because we needed Wi-Fi and we found out there was free Wi-Fi at the wrecked marina there's a whole lot of America between where I am and Canada to get Wild Child home to Canada, my European crew has been forced to apply for an American B1, B2 visa. She has to go online and fill out dozens and dozens of stupid forms and pay $168 to get a visa appointment at the U.S. Embassy in Barbados in December before Christmas. It doesn't go well. We end up fighting. It takes over six hours and she wants me to do it for her. But she has to fill out the forms. She doesn't know what they're asking and neither do I. Government forms never make sense. But eventually, we get it submitted and we go explore the local town. The weather matches her mood. She is grumpy. But now we have a visa appointment at the U.S. Embassy for December 17th. The day is not a total loss. We find cheesecake to help improve her mood. On the dinghy ride into shore the next day, we actually almost ran over a manatee. Came up right in front of the dinghy. Elena's mood is better, and we made contact with Sean and Shelley, the South African couple that guided us in the other day in the storms. They invited us to come to shore with them. They have a car, and they're willing to take us provisioning in Ponce. The greatest thing about the cruising lifestyle is, of course, the people that you meet. There are such wonderful and interesting characters out here on the ocean. Out of respect, we usually try not to film other people, but Sean and Shelley gave us permission. These wonderful cruisers have fled the violence of South Africa, have sailed out to the Caribbean, and are now running a charter business off their boat. They know what it's like to be cruisers far from home. 
they have a car and they're going to provision in Ponce and they've invited us to go with them. I've been on the ocean for so long and it's been so long since I've been in a car. It's freaking me out. Look at all the colors and sights. Look at how things are moving by so quickly. All the different vehicles. Look at the lines whizzing by. It's freaking me out. I can't handle it. I gotta cover my eyes. This next scene will be so comfortable, familiar, and boring for the rest of you, but I've been a soggy ocean rat for so long that to me, this is like another planet. This put me into culture shock. It has been so long since we've seen like a parking lot or a shopping mall that I, I am almost in culture shock. Our wonderful new friends have driven us into Ponce to maybe try and buy a camera to replace the one that we broke or lost. So. We're at some place called Sam's Club, and we're going to see if we can replace our, our camera for the YouTube videos. But it's like civilization, like cars, traffic, lines not painted on the road, like rules. It's different. It's very different than the DR. And isn't this the height of insanity? There is a parking lot guard tower, because I guess car theft and crime is so high here. You'd never see something like this in Canada. So far, all of the Season 3 YouTube video has been shot with my little Nikon point-and-shoot camera because the oceans killed all my other cameras, so we're on a mission to replace it. I do manage to find this cheap imitation GoPro, which might help me with the diving and the action shots. And I've done a lot of research on really cheap low-end cameras and I don't care I still like the Sony Handycam and we managed to find a replacement for the last one that the ocean killed and I'm not sure if you've noticed but my last captain's uniforms worn through pretty thin and almost see-through I need a new captain's uniform and for 11 bucks I find this beauty that I'm still wearing today Elena is always on the lookout for exotic foods, and we have no idea what this is. After a successful day of provisioning and a reintroduction to civilization, we go back down to the marina. Hey Sean and Shelly, thank you so much guys. We miss you. You are truly wonderful human beings and a credit to the cruising community. We appreciate everything that you did for us, and we hope to see you out here again someday. Salinas has been absolutely wonderful, and it's probably the best place in Puerto Rico for any cruiser or sailor to stop. Cruiser friendly, fabulous bay. We're anchored a lot further out from the rest of the bay. We're still reasonably protected about 300 degrees from the mangroves, but we're in 12 feet of water. Problem is, the depths are unknown going in and listed as seven feet. With the damage from Hurricane Maria having moved the bottom, I didn't want to risk Wild Child's eight foot keel. Wild Child's about to go sailing. There's no wind at all.